Welcome to Modern Approach. In today's video, we'll be tackling the top five AWS interview questions specifically designed for Java developers perfect for those preparing for cloud-based roles. Let's dive right in. Question five, what is IAM? And how do you manage permissions in AWS for a Java application? Identity and access management IAM is a core component in AWS, crucial for controlling access to your cloud resources. Why they ask. This question assesses your understanding of how security and permissions work in AWS, especially when building Java applications that may interact with multiple AWS services. Here's how you should answer this. IAM or Identity and Access Management is a service used to securely control access to AWS resources. In a Java application, permissions are managed by creating IAM roles and policies that define who has access to specific resources. For example, when a Java application needs to access S3, we can create a role with S3 read-only access permissions and attach that role to the application instance or Lambda function. This ensures that the application only has the permissions it needs to perform its operations. Pro tip. Always follow the principle of least privilege. Start by granting the smallest set of permissions and expand only as necessary. This minimizes security risks and adheres to best practices for cloud security. Question four. How do you implement an S3 bucket in a Java application? And what are some best practices? S3 is a popular storage service in AWS, and knowing how to integrate it into a Java application is a must-have skill. Why, they ask. The interviewer wants to see if you can not only interact with S3, but also understand the underlying details of its implementation and follow best practices for data management. Here's how you should answer this. To implement an S3 bucket in a Java application, I use the AWS SDK for Java. First, I configure the AWS credentials and create an S3 client object. Then, I use methods like put object and git object to upload and download files. For best practices, I enable server-side encryption for sensitive data and use versioning to keep track of file changes. Pro tip. Mention S3 bucket policies and access control lists ACLS to further refine access management. Highlighting these additional security measures shows that you think about protecting data, not just storing it. Question three, what is the difference between Elastic Beanstalk and EC2 for deploying Java applications? Both services can run Java applications, but each has its own use case depending on the deployment and scaling needs. Why they ask. This question is meant to see if you can select the right AWS service based on project requirements and justify your choices. Here's how you should answer this. Elastic Beanstalk is a POS platform as a service that abstracts the underlying infrastructure, making it easier to deploy and manage Java applications with minimal configuration. You just upload your code and Elastic Beanstalk handles deployment, scaling, and monitoring. EC2 Elastic Compute Cloud, on the other hand, is an IaaS infrastructure as a service that provides virtual servers where you have more control over the OS networking and storage, while EC2 offers greater flexibility. It requires more management effort compared to Elastic Beanstalk. Pro tip. If asked to choose, mention that Elastic Beanstalk is ideal for smaller projects or rapid prototyping, whereas EC2 is better for high traffic applications that need custom configurations. Question two, what is AWS Lambda and how can you use it to build serverless Java applications? AWS Lambda is central to serverless architecture and knowing how to integrate Java functions is key for modern application development. Why, they ask. They want to assess your familiarity with serverless computing and whether you can build efficient, cost-effective Java applications using AWS Lambda. Here's how you should answer this. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service that lets you run code without provisioning servers for a Java application. You can create a Lambda function using Java runtime and upload it in the form of a JAR file. Lambda functions are triggered by events like HTTP requests or changes in an S3 bucket. It's a great solution for microservices or background tasks because you only pay for the compute time you use. Pro tip. Mention the importance of cold start optimization in Lambda. Use techniques like minimizing the size of your deployment package and managing dependencies efficiently to reduce startup latency. 
Question 1. How do you implement a RESTful API in AWS using API Gateway in Lambda with Java? Building APIs is a core requirement for many cloud applications, and this question tests your ability to integrate multiple AWS services. Why, they ask. The interviewer wants to see if you can design a complete solution using AWS services and understand the interaction between API Gateway and Lambda. Here's how you should answer this. To build a RESTful API using API Gateway and Lambda with Java, I first create a Lambda function using the AWS SDK and Java runtime. Then, I define the endpoints and HTTP methods in API Gateway and link each method to the appropriate Lambda function. API Gateway handles the incoming requests, routes them to the Lambda function, and returns the response to the client. This setup is highly scalable and allows for easy monitoring through CloudWatch. Pro tip. To make your API production ready, consider implementing API throttling and authorization using IAM roles or custom authorizers. This ensures your API is secure and performs well under load. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more AWS interview prep tips from Modern Approach.